Hello friends, welcome to the Southwest region. This region of the United States here in green has four states only, but those four states take up a lot of land. Let's get ready to dive into the Southwest region. Have your reading packet ready so you can underline and highlight some of that important information as we go along today. All right, as always, at the end, you are gonna be answering some questions that are true or false. So let's preview those before we learn. The first statement is, the Southwest region has large number of states. The second one is, much of the land in the Southwest region is desert. The Rio Grande River forms the border between Texas and Mexico. The Hoover Dam was built to control flooding on the Mississippi River. So when we're finished today learning about the land and the water and the climate, we will answer some of these questions. Looking here at this picture, which is at the top of your reading, it says, home to the giant saguaro cactus, that's what these are, the southwest region stretches west from the Gulf of Mexico off the coast of Texas to the Colorado River in Arizona. Mexico borders the region on the south. And when we drew um, our names of our states in the southwest region, we also labeled the Gulf of Mexico and Mexico. All right, let's go ahead and read about the land and the water. Here is the picture of the four states in the Southwest. We have Oklahoma, Texas, New Mexico, and Arizona. And it says, even though the Southwest region covers a large amount of land, it has the smallest number of states. Hint, you might wanna underline that. There are only four states in the Southwest region, but they are very large states. The Sonoran Desert and the Chihuahuan Desert make up a large part of land in the Southwest region. The Sonoran Desert covers most of the Southern half of Arizona and New Mexico. So that actually covers, if you're looking at the map, most of the Southern part of Arizona and Southern New Mexico are made up of the Sonoran Desert. The Sonoran Desert has large sandy plains, flat land, and bare mountains, no greenery. Branches of the Colorado River run through it, so many trees, cacti, and shrubs find enough water to grow there. Beautiful flowering cacti and yucca make the desert seem more like a garden than the open sandy place one might imagine. Thinking of a desert, you might think of flat sandy land, but the Sonoran Desert has lots of plant life. The Chihuahuan Desert is the largest desert in North America. It is approximately 800 miles long and 250 miles wide. Most of the Chihuahuan Desert is in Mexico. In the United States, the desert extends into parts of New Mexico, Texas, and southeastern Arizona. So here it would kind of go up into this little lower part of New Mexico and Texas, but then covers most of the um, parts of Mexico. The Southwest has vast plains, spectacular canyons, and colorful plateaus. All of those things we learned about with our landforms. The Eastern part of the Southwest region is made up of plains, which are areas of flat land. The central plains are the lowest lands in the Southwest region. The fertile soil of the central plains spreads from the coast of Texas along the Gulf of Mexico and into central Oklahoma. So the central plains are coming from here along the Gulf up through Oklahoma. And remember the central plains also went into the Midwest region. The Central Plains are home to many farms and ranches. Farther west, coming this direction, the land rises to form the Colorado Plateau, which is up in this area. 
A plateau is a high, flat landform that rises steeply from the land around it. The Colorado Plateau covers much of the northern New Mexico and Arizona, right along that border there of the northern Arizona, New Mexico. Most of the Colorado Plateau is fairly level, but it is crisscrossed by hundreds of deep canyons. We also talked about canyons last week with landforms. A canyon is a deep, narrow valley with steep sides. The largest and most famous of these canyons is the Grand Canyon. The Colorado River travels south and west through some of the driest parts of the country. Colorado River. Then it crosses into Mexico and ends, is, ends in the Gulf of California on the other side down in Mexico. The Colorado River is 1,470 miles long. Many smaller rivers flow into the Colorado. Rivers that join other rivers are called tributaries, so little rivers that flow into bigger rivers. Each tributary adds water and soil called silt to the Colorado. This silt gives the river its reddish brown color. Here is a picture to the right of some of the farms and ranches in the central plains of Texas and Oklahoma. Here down below is a picture of the Hoover Dam. Let's read about that now. The Hoover Dam is one of America's greatest manufactured structures, meaning it's man-made. Hoover Dam was built to control flooding on the Colorado River, underline note, and to store water. An area where water is stored is called a reservoir. The Hoover Dam was built more than 60 years ago. Lake Mead, the lake behind the Hoover Dam, provides water for many of the people in the Southwest region. So here is a picture of the Hoover Dam. And then you have Lake Mead that is here and it is holding water for people. The dam only allows so much water to flow through it down to the lake below. And as the water flows through this area of concrete in the dam, it actually produces electricity also. The Rio Grande River also brings much needed water to this area. The Rio Grande is 1,885 miles long. The Rio Grande begins in the mountains of Colorado and then flows south through the middle of New Mexico. Then it turns southeast, making a big bend or turn along the border of Texas. And it forms a border there between Texas and Mexico. Um, it flows there until it empties into the Gulf of Mexico off of Texas. The Rio Grande forms part of the border between the U.S. and Mexico. In Mexico, the Rio Grande is known as the Rio Bravo del Norte. Fun facts about the land and the water. Now let's talk about the climate. What's the weather like in the Southwest region? When we're finished, you'll answer some questions that are true or false. The statements you'll have are, Many places in the Southwest get 300 days of sunshine a year. Dallas, Texas is America's hottest large city, and there are many forests in the Southwest region. Let's learn about the climate. Much of the Southwest is desert, hint. So it is a hot, dry climate with very, very little rain. Many places in the Southwest have 300 days of sunshine a year. Hint, hint, you might want to underline. The climate of the Southwest region is mild. That means there's not many changes in the weather. Because it is sunny and warm most of the time, people like to visit the region. Here is a picture down here of the plateaus. And you can see how the sides are going up steep and there's flat land on the top. The eastern parts of Oklahoma and Texas, so that central plain area, 
does get enough rain to grow crops, but water must still be used carefully. When it doesn't rain for a long time, a drought can occur. A drought is a period of little or no rain. Droughts cause serious problems because they can hurt crops. If there's not enough rainfall for the crops to grow, they won't be able to. Here is a picture of a big horn sheep. These sheep are very good at climbing up the mountainous terrain in the Southwest region. Much of the land in the Southwest region is bare, meaning nothing. Not enough rainfalls for forests to grow. Hint, you might wanna underline that. Over time, plants, animals, and people have all adapted to living in this dry land. To adapt means to change in order to survive. The Navajo, for example, the Navajo is an American Indian or Native American group, learned how to grow corn and raise sheep with very little rainfall, which is something that's very hard to do. Desert animals such as the Mexican gray wolf, the great horned owl, the golden eagle and the rattlesnake have adapted to the environment. During the day, the animals find hideouts where the sun cannot get them. So they'll go under bushes or down into burrows so the sun doesn't bake them. The bighorn sheep has adapted to the desert because it has big feet, which are good for walking on the rough terrain, which is what we just looked at. The bighorn sheep only needs to drink water every few days. The pocket mouse, here he is over here, doesn't need to drink at all because it gets all the water it needs from the food that it eats. Most desert animals are nocturnal, which means they hunt at night when it is cooler. Here is a picture of Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona is America's hottest large city. Underline this. During the summer, temperatures can soar to 115 degrees Fahrenheit. A hundred years ago, Phoenix was a small little town. Not many people wanted to move to Arizona because it was too hot, too dry, and too lonely. Two things made it possible to live in the desert air conditioners and automobiles. You don't want to be stuck without air conditioning or having to walk around when it's 115. Air conditioning lets people live in comfort no matter how hot the day is. Automobiles made travel through the desert safer. And when you look at this picture, I want you to notice how flat the land is and then all of a sudden here rises up some of those plateaui looking mountains. Travelers who got stuck in the desert could die of thirst before they were automobiles. Because cars and good roads made travel easier and safer, people began to move to Phoenix. Some liked the hot, dry weather so much, they decided to live there. With a population of more than one million people, Phoenix is now the sixth largest city in the United States. You definitely have to like some heat in order to live there. Next time I see you, we're going to talk all about the products and natural resources that we get from that Southwest region.